What's up, galaxy? It's time for Bantha Soup, the show where everything Star Wars related is up for discussion. I am your host, Gil Garcia. As you can see, I am not in the Bantha tank. It has been a crazy past 20 hours. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but there's a new Star Wars movie, Solo, a Star Wars story, is officially out, and it's been a, a wild ride for me. So, Memorial Day weekend, I'm headed home to pick up the family, so I didn't really have a whole lot of time to get to the Bantha tank and do, you know, set up a camera and all that. But I really wanted to just talk about Solo, let you know what I thought, you know, what I loved, what I liked, what I didn't like, what I thought was eh, okay. So let's just talk Solo real quick. Just a quick, uh, oh, by the way, this is going to be full spoiler review. I'm going to be totally candid with, you know, everything that I saw. So again, if you haven't seen the movie, quick fill off of this, go watch Solo, okay? Um, right off the bat, I will say it was fun. It was, it was a good movie. You know, I had a lot of fun. It was magical seeing Han Solo and Chewie back on the big screen and chumming it up, being pals. That was great. So, getting ahead of myself, but the beginning of the movie, I really enjoyed. It got me pumped up. I loved seeing Corellia. That was great. The shipyard. Uh, me and my brothers used to always play that we were on the planet Corellia with our action figures. The shipyard and all that stuff, it was awesome. So I love seeing the Star Destroyers being built. The, uh, there's a chase scene, that weird uh, centipede lady I thought was really great. I love seeing Han in his land speeder cruiser thing and they were just barreling down Corellia. That was all cool. Um, the way Han gets off of the planet Corellia I thought was really great. You know, he, for him to get away really quick, he just like kind of forces himself into the Imperial Army. That was cool. I love seeing that. I wasn't a big fan of how they explained and come up with Han's last name Solo. You know, as he's uh, enlisting into the Imperial Army, he's like, well, where do you come from? He's like, I don't come from anyone. I don't have any people. Oh, so you're Solo. Mm -hmm. We'll call you Solo. Boo. Why? I, they, I don't even feel like they had to explain what Han's name was. Like, why? It, just his name is Han Solo. Okay, okay, fine, that's cool. So, he joins the Imperial Academy. Kira has to stay, Kira has to stay behind. Jumps ahead three years later, you know, and that's when we finally get to meet up with Tobias Beckett and his whole ragtag team. I thought that was cool. You know, we meet him in the Imperial Army and, uh, you know, he has them join his, his group. They're gonna steal this Imperial ship, heist the uh, train. Sorry, I'm on the road. I wanna make sure we're safe too. So, I thought it was really awesome how we meet Chewbacca. Whenever uh, they throw Han into the pit, it felt like a rancor. He was about to come out of the cave, but nope, it was this big enslaved, buddied up Chewie, and they have like this awesome fight. I love when Alden, or when Han, drops some uh, broken up Wookiee talk on him. He's like, <laughs> and they kind of go back and forth. I thought that was great. Uh, I loved how they escaped. They kind of helped each other escape. Oh, the Mimban Stormtroopers. Lame. What happened? I thought we were going to see some Mimbans doing some awesome wicked fighting and all that stuff. They're just kind of two Mimban spectators watching Han and Chewie fight, you know, hoping that they tear each other up or whatever. All right, well, that's, that's cool. My, the figure still looks awesome. I love that he's in my collection, but... So, a little disappointed with the Mimban Stormtroopers, the Mud Troopers. So, we get off uh, Mimban at that point and we head to, I guess, steal the hyperdrive juice on the train. That whole scene I thought was really fun and awesome. I loved the character Val. I thought they did a really good job with her. Her kind of creeping around on the train tracks. That was uh, Tobias's girlfriend. Sorry, the sun, sunlight's kind of shining in. Tobias's girlfriend. Um, that was really cool. I like that whole part. Uh, seeing the range troopers, they were just as cool as I thought they were gonna be. I love seeing the boots kind of magnetically sealed to the train. That whole scene was cool. Chewy, man, this was Chewy's movie. They did him right. I love seeing Chewie just you know hopping around the train and dismantling all the the tracks to you know let the pieces of the train go where they just have the one cart of uh, hyperspace juice I thought that was really fun and cool um, so then uh, 
we get our first glimpse of one of the baddies, uh, Empress Ness. Empress Ness and her gang shows up. I thought it was great. Empress Ness on the train. That whole fight scene between her and Tobias was really awesome. Oh, Rio, the multi-arm guy. Loved him. I thought he was awesome. Woo. Almost missed my turn there talking some Star Wars. Dang. <laughs> Sorry, let me fix the camera here. All right. I'll be careful. I get excited, you know, you know, you know how we do, you know how we do it. But yeah, so Rio, I was really cool. I really hope they make a figure of him. I really want that guy. Um, so, where was I? Empress Ness. That fight between her and uh, Beckett was really great. I love that. I love how you know, after all that, you know, fighting and trying to get the hyperspace juice, they end up failing and all just blows up in their face. So then they head over to uh, Dryden Voss. They gotta let Dryden Voss, they know they failed. Gotta tell you, not super impressed or scared of Dryden Voss. I thought he was kind of goofy, especially for the actor who's playing him. I don't know, it just felt weak and lame. You know, he's got the scars on his face. He's like, yeah, okay. He felt like a mustache twirler. Yeah, we're gonna steal. We're gonna steal because you're gonna pay me back. You know? I, do you guys feel that? I don't know. I kind of got that sense. But so they're like, all right, we got to pay you back. We're going to go steal some more stuff. We got to head down to Kessel. So they head off to Kessel. And in order to get to Kessel, they're going to need a ship, right? So they meet Lando. I loved Donald Glover as Lando. When we first walked into that card game and you hear uh, Donald Glover talking, he is on point as Lando. He just sounds just like Billy Dee Williams and I, I, I really got pumped for that scene. All the different characters in there were awesome. I love that. You know, we go to see the Millennium Falcon and yeah, uh, one thing that I'll say about Lando, I do feel like he was a little bit underused. I always felt like Lando was, was a fighter. I knew he was suave and he's kind of play a player, but he wasn't really tough in this. You know, he didn't want to get his hands dirty very much and you know, in Return of the Jedi, you get to see Lando, pilot Lando, leading the attack on the second Death Star, and they blow it up, him, him and Knight and up, kicking some butt. I don't really get that from this this Lando. You know, he's, in Empire Strikes Back, he's using his uh, blaster to shoot up all the different stormtroopers and stuff. Didn't really get to see any of that. Um, however, we do get to see Lando's SJW droid. L3, guys, I'm sorry, I just did not like L3. I that was the least, that was the probably the, the thing that I did not like about the movie the most was L3. Don't get me wrong, I'm all about you know equality, uh, you know, women's rights, all that. Of course, I love women, you know, strong female women. I love Jen Erso, I love Ray, but you know, the thing that I've always loved about Star Wars is subtlety, right? Subtle things, you know, but L3 didn't just really tap you on the nose with their social justice warrior stuff. She freaking bonked you right in the face with it. And I was just like, as soon as it was getting into that, I knew what she was doing. I was like, oh, why are we doing this? Please, no. So there's like this weird love chemistry between her and Lando. I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But so we get to Kessel and the Kessel scene to me honestly was a little weak. Uh, we get to hear Chewie ripping a Kessel guard's arm out of his sockets. That was kind of weak. I wish we could have got to actually seen at least Chewie like ripping some droid arms out of their sockets or something. You know, I, I felt like that kind of went on deaf ears. There, there was not a reaction in the theater when that happened. Um, but so, you know, we steal some more juice that's worth a lot of money, but it's super explosive and, you know, they, they get out of there. Oh, Tobias Beckett, Easter egg, wears the uh, Lando's disguise that we, he wears in Return of the Jedi. That was cool. There was some good Easter eggs. Um, you know, apparently Tobias Beckett killed Arua Singh, so that was a good name drop. Lando was congratulating him and thanking him on that. I thought that was kind of cool. That was fun. Uh, Kira brings up Bosk and the Zahn sisters. You know, instead of ragtagging with, um, oh, who was Kira? Did Val say that? I don't remember. Maybe Val said that. I don't know. 
but they're talking about getting Bosk and the Val sisters. It was Val who brought that up. Sorry. Um, instead of taking on Han and Chewie, these newbies, whatever. But Dawn sisters are from Shadows of the Empire. So what does that mean? Shadows of the Empire? Is that canon? Is that canon? That's enough for me. Dash Rendar, baby. What's up? Um, and then, of course, Boss, the, the beloved bounty hunter. Um, so they get off Kessel. Kind of silly. You know, it's fun to see Chewie. Oh, love Chewie. Everything about the movie that Chewie does, I thought was great. You know, he sees some Wookiee slaves and he, like, says, you know, I'm going to go handle my fam and take care of my, my own real quick. I thought that was cool. Um, so L3 gets her face shot and I was like, oh, awesome. L3 is going to, you know, bite the bullet on this. Love equality, love women, but L3, come on, dude. Have to be like that keep politics out of star wars don't that's what last jedi was doing and i didn't like it then i don't like it i just don't like it i want my politics out of star wars i want it to be fun you know i be subtle about it you know be subtle let's let's make it about the story the star wars story uh, okay we get out of kessel the kessel run the actual kessel run was awesome them flying through the vortex and really kind of seeing them you know ragtag the millennium falcon to get out of the vortex and for han to you know do the kessel run in 12 parsecs they they roll up on the star destroyer i thought that was really cool the big space sea monster that's in space was electrified i thought was really great that was fun and you know scary they were gonna get sucked into the vortex and they're just kind of like hammering and tinkering like classic millennium falcon style to you know, juice it up when they had to. I thought that was cool. Um, they get out of Kessel, and then you know we get to the the, the island where they're gonna drop the juice off that they just stole, drop it off to Dryden Boss, and you know Dryden Boss betrays them, and then you know Beckett turns out he double crosses Han, and then Han double crosses Beckett, and they're one step ahead. Okay, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. What I didn't like is. Infus Ness ends up showing up and y'all was like, oh man, Infus Ness is about to, you know, own it up again. And I thought it would have been cool if Infus Ness just stayed kind of like an anti-hero marauder. You know, I thought I, it was great that she's a girl, but turns out, you know, she's got a soft heart. We're doing it for the right reasons. And, you know, we're against this gang and, you know, they're cutting people's tongues out and all that stuff. And I don't know. I just... I thought Infus was cooler as a marauder, anti-bad guy, kind of Deadpool-ish, like, you know? That would have been better for me. I liked Infus best when she was a little bit more mysterious and, you know, a, a badass, so to speak. We get the big Easter egg with Darth Maul. Awesome to see Ray Park back in the makeup, rocking the horns. You know, he does force grab his lightsaber, turns it on, ooh, you know? Oh, it is Maul and he's got his double blade. <coughs> That was cool to see Maul. He's got his uh, robotic legs on. Is it Dragon Maul out? Are we beating a dead horse? I, I don't know. I don't want to say we are, but you know, we had Maul in Clone Wars. I wasn't even sure if he was should have come back in the Clone Wars as Spider Maul and him going crazy. And then we got him in Rebels. And, you know, finally we have the big toe-to-toe -to -toe battle with Maul and Obi-Wan and Rebels and you know I was like okay he's gone Maul great but now he's back now I know that the timeline this all happens before Rogue One and uh, Rebels but Maul's back I guess they that that's their open door for a sequel I would be honestly I'm not I'm excited to see Maul back in action especially Ray Park doing it I bet they could do some really cool things but it was a cool Easter egg you know I'm just kind of nitpicking now but uh, it was cool to see Maul. Turns out he's like running the whole gang. So I thought that was that was pretty clever. You know, that Maul, instead of, you know, he turns from the Sith and he becomes this big crime lord. So they're keeping in line with that. So, you know, I'm interested, interested to see if they make a sequel, you know, what Maul's going to bring to it. I thought it would be cool. Um, I loved how they kind of, you know, whenever Han and Tobias Beckett have their final showdown, Han shoots first. Was that is that what they were trying to make? You know, Tobias is about to take him out, but Han shoots first. So, you know, overall, had a lot of fun with the movie. 
I love seeing Chewie and Han back in action. That was the best part for me. You know, the jokes really hit for me. It was on point. It was a fun movie. Was it great? No, it really wasn't great for me. It wasn't bad. It was a here's average. I'm like right here with it. So I gotta watch it a couple more times to really kind of get the feel for it. But I did enjoy a lot of parts, lots and lots of parts of it. The Easter eggs were great. So let me know what you guys think about Solo a Star Wars Story. You know, did you love it? Did you hate it? What did you like? What did you not like? Let's keep the conversation going. This is my opinion. I'm not necessarily right. I'm not necessarily wrong. You know, this is what we do. We talk Star Wars. We have fun in this play, this sandbox. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, we would really appreciate a like on our video. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe on YouTube to stay up to date on everything Bantha Suit. We do reviews, we build customs, we talk about everything Star Wars. And check us out on Facebook at Bantha Soup. Send us a comment, send us a message, send us some pictures, give us a like, let's talk Star Wars. Galaxy, thank you so much for watching. My name is Gil, and this is Bantha